trying to get caught up on a lot. I'm, I was preparing for a game in Cincinnati. Yeah. And um, you know, I get the call, um, and, and here I am. And now I'm trying to do all this paperwork and trying to catch up with you know the team. I got an offer and scout. I'm trying to find a place to live. You know, things happen pretty fast. You know, um, I guess the good thing is, is you play the system, so you know the system, yeah. you know all of that part, that translates. Um, that's no different, right? No, um, I got to get back used to it because since I played in this system, it's been, I played for a lot, a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I just got to get back used to it. It's pretty much, you know, Flex. Yeah, yeah, basically. Now, you pull Hugs, you know, when Hugs takes, went to K State, he had the, the black um, Jumpman stuff and just put the logo over top. Did you do that with the. <laughs> WB over top of UC stuff? <laughs> um, no, it was under Army UC. I need <laughs> Coach uh, Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. Uh, so many years spent uh, in the pros with, with men, other pros. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, your, your years at Cincinnati was kind of an introduction getting back to younger guys, but but, but what's that transition been like for you? Because you know you haven't spent your whole life around the, the college game. Right, right. These these last few years and the few years we make and then the last few years with Coach Miller has been great because most of my career was NBA basketball. Yeah. And the college game is it's very different. So I've learned a lot from being from Coach Cron um, and you know being around the guys again. They all you know they want to they want to go where I've been. So you know they all listen to me. They all take to me pretty well. But you know learning a college game. That's been a big help. And it seems like you're focusing mostly on the guards here, is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I can help them all. You know, I've, I've talked to a few of them, you know, on the on the side, just, you know, them picking my brain and asking me certain questions. But I was a guard, and I think I could, you know, I can help them all. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's where I'm going from. And then my last question, uh, re recruiting, uh, you know, getting out on the road. And like you said, you've already got a lot of stuff to do here, find a house and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, recruiting never stops. What's that going to be like for? I mean, that's something you've never done before. So, are you, are you taking the pointers, or, or, uh, or just be yourself, or how? Well, with Cincinnati, I wasn't able to go out on the road, but they used me a lot in recruiting, and I got a lot of connections. Um, I think that part will be easier for me because I, I know so many people being from the DC area. I got so many people that just want to help me. Um, so all I gotta do is get out there and show my face and you know try to get to know some of these kids. And some of these kids I already talked to and haven't seen them in person. Mark, Bob Burchell, formerly of the Cincinnati Inquirer, <laughs> way long ago. <laughs> today, today, bunch of papers around here. Uh, anyway, uh, what was it like? You're the National Player of the Year. You're in high school. You're, you know, Mr. Big, and you all of a sudden wind up walking in on Huggins. Yeah. And I mean, that's got to be like a either kick in the ass or a slap in the face. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which. But uh, uh, what was that like that year? And you know, you've got all those more experienced big players, big time players around you. Well, I knew what I was getting myself into. And, and luckily, my senior year, I played for a coach named Max Good at Main St. Joe Institute. He's very similar to us. Very intense. I was the best player in the country, but he, he doesn't care. He still cussed me out and told me I'm skinny and how soft I was every day. So that prepared me a lot going into, you know, Cincinnati with hugs, some of the same stuff, you know, you know, I'm soft every day, I'm, I'm sorry, but to everybody else, I'm like the best thing in the world, but to him, he didn't care, but I knew he loved me, um, and we had a, a really, really good team, and I thought it was a, a smooth year. What's so, what sold you on, on, on there? I mean, you could have you could have gone to, you know, almost right. anywhere. Right, well, the plan was always to go straight to the NBA, and I decided to, to pick a college late. And I guess a lot of the questions where I me mean was, was my body, is he ready for the NBA? Um, and if I play hard. And um, when I, if I went to go to Cincinnati, you know, they had a great weight program. <coughs> if you play for hugs, you have no choice but to play hard. So I figured that would answer all those questions that they had about me. It's probably like a day off going to the NBA then. Yeah, it got <laughs> easier. I tell hugs, from MCI to Cincinnati to the NBA, it just got easier. <laughs> Team was on a five-game losing streak, and you get on the bench. You take credit for the win on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't take credit, man. Them guys played their butts off. Man. What was it like, though? I mean, you're, you, you basically get here, and first thing you do, you're right out on the floor for a game. Yeah, Not even any court time with them, anything, really. Yeah, it's, 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 it's wild. I had that one day.
before I was able to, you know, get out there. And, I mean, I looked at like two practices, but it was it was wild. I was happy, you know, we won the game, and hopefully that can start a snowball. We start to run a few off. Coach Wesley Shoemaker, BlueGoldSports.com. You said you've kind of talked with Huggins, and when this opportunity opened, you jumped on it. Yeah. How much have you been monitoring the West Virginia program over the past, let's say, year? And how much input have you had with Coach Huggins, maybe just in conversations before you came on? Well, I've been monitoring since Coach been here. You know, me and a lot of a lot of his former players, even people at Cincinnati, they root for West Virginia just because Huggins is here. But he still got a lot of influence, you know, over there. So um, I've always you know, paid attention to root for West Virginia to win. Since I've got into coaching, you know, I've always, I mean, I've always talked to coach, but I've always talked to him about, man, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to coach, and I want to, you know, move up in my position. And even when Eric left, you know, I, I called him right away. I'm like, man, Eric's leaving. What you going to do? And then, you know, this opportunity came, and luckily, I you know, I'm pretty sure it's hundreds of people that you know wanted this opportunity, and you know, I'm happy coach gave it to me. Hey, tomorrow, I'm Mike, we're for 24/7 Sports. Um, not going to the NBA, that man, that just delays the dream for here. Some people working on for like a lifetime, I would imagine. Um, how do you, how do you get talked into that decision? How do you talk yourself into that decision? And then, I mean, you could have, you could have gone a number of directions and been the man on the campus, or gone to a team that maybe wasn't as demanding as what you do since then. Yeah. You went a different route there too. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, just bookending those decisions, going there, and then, and then why not the NBA? Well. Like I can say the plan was always to go to the NBA. I was really thinking about college from like sophomore and junior. Even my senior year, the NBA was always the plan. And then when it came down to it, just the people around me, um, they say, you know, you could go out in the draft and maybe get drafted to top of your team and probably move up if you know if you have good workouts. But they said I was too good of a talent to maybe not go where I deserve to go. Um, so I guess we all collectively decided a year of school, you know, maybe just, just to give the, the, the NBA scouts and gyms peace of mind that, you know, I'm, I've worked on my body and that, you know, I play hard. So it just made sense to go to a school, you know, like that. And, and also, Kenny Satterfield, who was a good friend of mine, he already signed to Cincinnati. He was blowing my phone up telling me, you know, I didn't come over there play with them and Kenya was a far way to do. I knew they were I knew we would be a good team there. And uh, yeah I could have went to a, a team not as good, not as demanding, averaged a whole bunch of points. And I mean I still would have got drafted high probably. I didn't think that was that was a problem. It was just answering those questions that they had about me. And then your most recent job in Cincinnati, the, the titles are kind of broad too. What did you do there? What was your day to day like? Um yeah player development was a title but Everybody over there is like a, it's like a collective effort. Everybody does a little bit every day. Um, but they, but they know the rules. So they use their life when the guys came to campus. Um, also, just you know, calling, calling the kids and, and texting kids and without kids, just building relationships. Um, I help with scout reports. Um, and whenever guys go through, I'm able to be on the floor and you know, work with some of the guys. It just basically just to lean on and you know things that always go right and advice and you know just to help along whichever way I can. And if I get one more um what have you seen from your new players? I know it's early, but what have you seen so far and I guess beyond that, what do you see that maybe they don't see that you'd like to work out with them? I'm not sure yet. I was I was talking to um Emmett today just basically telling him that um like you know, him guarded him guarded um kid for TCU the point guard last game. And I played that role, you know, six nine, and I'm, I'm a guard. I'm guarding these smaller guards in, in the NBA, and you know, my left really bothered these guys. Like Adam Adams is one of my best friends. He always told me, like, you were like one of the hardest, two, one of two of the hardest guys that ever guarded me in the NBA, just because of my left. And, and I told him that could really be a man trade. You know, and being that versatile, you know, being able to guard multiple positions can really help our team. They can help them, you know, in their career because that's the type of guys they can get.